live, and it's special because we have somebody special here. We've got our man Alex from Alex on Autos visiting us here at the Boulder Studio. So we moved the set, we moved the time, and we moved the topic because today we're going to be talking about the best cars that we've driven, the most surprising cars that we've driven, and the cars that are coming that we're looking forward to the most. And of course, as always, is my man Nathan. Hey guys. And Michael. Hey everyone. So we're doing a little bit of a car talk <laughs> show today. A little bit, a little bit. So I'm going to start with, um, let's just go around, we'll do like a round robin, and then Mike, you've got comments, so if there anybody, if anybody has comments, we'll, we'll, we'll do shout outs to those chat. as well. And I'm going to start with the car that I drove that I thought was just phenomenal. I drove it, I think it was last week, and it's the new Veloster N. Mm -hmm. I think they nailed that puppy out of the ballpark. I got behind the wheel at Thunder Mountain, Thunder Hill, Thunder Hill, Thunder Hill. Thunder Hill Racetrack near uh, Sacramento, California. And I'm usually not a big track guy because honestly they scare me. And I don't want to be the guy who puts it into the wall and has his face tweeted around the world in two and a half minutes because that will happen. Oh yeah, that will, that will happen. happen. There's it's a lot it's of really happened before. Yeah. So, so, you know, track things aren't my favorite, but um, Basically, they uh, benchmarked your car, Mike. Yeah, they benchmarked the GTI, yeah, right. and I think they whooped its butt. I think I think the they whooped time. its part. They uh, took the horsepower up to 275 in the performance Ooh, model. Yeah. They added a limited slip differential. Mm -hmm. They added special Ooh. track tires, if you want it from the dealership, special big-ass Hyundai brakes. But what makes that car so magic isn't any of that. Oh. It also has, like... Well, what makes it special is that Albert Biermann, the guy who used to run the M division, basically, mm -hmm. head of development, actually did the track tuning on it. Mm -hmm. And so just like an M car, it's got a button on the steering wheel that you can push and select yeah. all these different parameters. So you can change the engine note, right? It's got a butterfly valve, so it can sound really good. And it's got, get this, that fake rasp, right? That backfire. That's <laughs> pop, 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 pop. Yeah, it's got that. You can change the suspension. You can change the throttle response. You can it change the doors. You can, and it has three doors. Three you doors. can change the steering. Yes, we don't have the bell, but we did. We did get a super chat donation from Mike Perez. Hey, thanks, thanks Mike. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, appreciate, appreciate it. That. Thank you very much, dude. We'll put you on uh, the hood. Uh, yeah, welcome to the hood. Uh, yeah, it's in the other room. It's in the other room. We'll, 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 we'll definitely put you on there. So I, I love that car, but what makes it what what the, what makes it special? The magic sauce is that Albert tuned it, or Hyundai tuned it to make it fun to drive. Mm -hmm. So it's got a lot of downforce. He specifically went out of his way to say. We didn't do it so it would set the fastest track time. We did it so that it would be very controllable and easy to drive, and it is, mm -hmm. right? There's no torque steer, just like the Type R, no torque steer whatsoever. And you get into a corner, car feels really solid. Where you point it, it goes. When you hit the brake, the back end doesn't want to come around you because it's got a lot of downforce. It's just a really fun, manageable car to drive, and you feel like, well, you know, Alonzo, pick your favorite Formula One driver driving it, and it's not hard to do. So I really love that car. You know, when you leave a program and you think to yourself, how could I make this work? You know, we just had the Fiesta ST, that didn't work. So I think hot hatches probably aren't our thing, but I was really <laughs> working hard on how do I get one, <laughs> of these? Get one of these? Yeah, for the office, so. I think the really cool thing about it is like, you take all those things, right? Limited slip diff, adaptive suspension, adaptive exhaust. You put all that into a package and you somehow manage to make it cost on the top end, like. I think they're saying around thirty thousand yeah. dollars loaded. Yeah, well, the, I mean, remember it is a subcompact car, so it's technically size category down from Type R, Civic, mm. GTI, etc. It's it's in that next size category down, which those other buyers don't play in. So they're manufacturing. So, so the only like chink in the armor is the N, right? Because the N's supposed to stand for Neon or Nanjing, Nanjing, which is racetrack in Korea. Where oh, they yeah. where they tune it, but then even they were like. First of all, there's no racetrack there. It's it's <laughs> just like it's just like a it's like a proving grounds. <laughs> and they kind of try to move it into more of a Nurburgring thing, right? Yeah. So so they were like, oh, it stands for or Nurburgring, whichever one you want, right? Yeah. Something you other than than this word you can't say where there's no racetrack. Mm. But it's cool. And it's cool. I like it. Pick your letter. It works for me. Uh, and I'm hoping to get one uh, very soon. They're gonna, they're going to go in the media fleet. They had a whole bunch there that we got to drive. And they're all going in a different media fleet. So hopefully you'll. On to make note to Hyundai now. Yeah, yeah you'll, you'll, you should be getting one soon as well. And then we'll put it up on the track and give Paul a, a crack at it to see how fast it is compared to the other cars we've tested. All right, Nathan, I talked about Oh, quick question for you. Yeah. Civic Type R yeah. versus... Veloster and... Really? All yeah, take it. Yeah, all day. Right. Yeah, yeah, all day. All day could, first of all, I don't fit in the Civic because of those seats. They're too, uh, yeah, I'm too they're big. Aggressive. They're aggressive. Too fast. Stuff. Yeah, and it's just uncomfortable. Whereas this I actually fit into. 
Yeah. Plus, I, I felt the exhaust, no, the, the one chink in the armor. It, the, I think the Type R might be faster around the track. Oh, yeah. Probably. Probably, but uh, this is more comfortable, and it sounds better. The Type R does not sound Type R right. sounds weak, honestly. Yeah, it's, it's got that yeah. third exhaust, but That's this thing's... supposed to help Yeah, this thing has there. dual exhaust on one other side. Yeah, they're, like, they're like that enormous. big. They're yeah. enormous. They look they're literally like softball size, right? Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. could stuck a 16-inch yeah. softball into that <laughs> exhaust pipe. That's awesome. All right, you do that. So mine is exactly like yours, only mine is better and different. Yep. And that's because <laughs> mine is, you know, <laughs> He's got an awesome idea, but he's wrong. Okay. No, no, the, the, the best vehicle you drove, and you just forgot, and I get it, you know, <laughs> is the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk. Wow. That is uh, a balls to the wall, insane ride. There is nothing about it that makes any sense. Nothing. That's true. That it it, it sense. doesn't make sense, does it? But it is ridiculously fast. It actually handles pretty good. Yeah. And it terrifies people who drive up WRXs. Yes. When I go right up on them and then I go around them like this. And wait <laughs> and take off. Your it is a beast and I love that car. That's another I'm one that I'm sad because I'm here with you all and the track hawk is sitting at the airport parking lot. Oh my goodness! I had to be here. So well, thank you. Yeah, I left it. Yeah. For, yeah. I left it for you, Nathan. Thank wow. you. So, thank you. Did you get to drive it though? I did. I, I drove it for four days, and yeah. it's at the airport. And then when I get back, I'll be driving it again. It is, it is a special kind of stupid. Yeah. <laughs> like, What's people say about me? Only. <laughs> but FCA does stupid so oh, well. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they, they, they just took they took the 707 horsepower engine, jammed it under the hood of the Grand Cherokee, wow. added a knob, and that was kind of it. I mean. There's more leather on the inside, but you're driving it around a corner, and it's like a wet noodle. You have no idea where the thing is going. There's no steering feel. Yeah, there's, you there's can no go around feel. corners about as fast, because on a skid pad, it actually matches the GLE 63S. actually matches it in, in horizontal Gs. You have no idea what the Grand Cherokee is doing. I mean, it's like you're all over the place. Yeah, that's so you punch it and hold on for dear life. Yeah. You just kind of hope that but it does it. But kind of a weird sort of way that actually makes it fun in a in like an uncivilized sort of way. I have a funny story for you about that and it has to do with him. Uh oh. We went to Moab, Utah and I contacted Jeep and I said I really would like to, a Jeep to bring the Moab. Yeah, to so Moab. A, a Jeep to Moab. To Moab. The, the, the off-road so like During the Easter Jeep yeah. Safari. The, you know, <laughs> and it was so, so, I could just picture it. Some of the guys, they know me. And they thought, how about we freak him out? Give him the track hawk. Let him take that. So sure enough, I had to take it. And I had to follow him because he wanted to do an MPG challenge. Oh, track hawk oh versus Wrangler. So I, Wrangler. Yeah, so oh, and I had to do one. Well, you got to go watch that video on TV. You have to watch it on now. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it was surprisingly video. close. It was, yeah, it was a very close battle. battle. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm bouncing around like a chimpanzee on some high-end drugs and sitting there having to follow him as he's just casually cussing up it over the hills. The of JK with yeah. big-ass tires mm. does not go quickly no. up Vail Pass. No, no. I made up for it when I returned home. And the best part was that that vehicle it really is a fun GT vehicle. It yeah. is. It's yeah. so comfortable. And you could just go hundreds of miles, and ex ex except for the fact that it's really horrible oh, mileage. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but I know you guys are spoiled at being so high above sea level, but you know where I am, we can actually go zero to sixty in that thing in about three seconds. Oof. I think we were three in the high. Yeah, we were like four flat. I think without without launch control, just in sport mode, just you know off brake onto the gas, three twos every time. Wow. If you use launch control, there's just so much slip. All four tires are just spinning. It was still three two, so it didn't actually improve anything. But if you had better grip at sea level, you could probably you know, do three. I'm going to go out and live and say, you know, everybody's like trying to think of the car to buy that's going to be very collectible in 30 years. I think that may be one of them, right? Oh. Forget about the Demon. Forget really? about the Ford GT. Get, your, get yourself, yeah, because this thing's not going to sell a lot, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, and it's going to be a very rare Jeep indeed. Because I've we, heard from the guy that runs Allpar that you can actually get the track hawks below MSRP now. Whoa. Wow, so there you go. And that Allpar guy knows it. A future collectible below MSRP. Yeah. All right, Mike, what's your... Go ahead, Junior. Well, yeah. Logan Hart asked me in the chat, Mike, how's your GTI, by the way? How many miles? Well, my GTI is... It's leaking like a sieve. Due for a, a, a visit to the shop. Because yeah. I took off my plastic engine cover, yeah. and I found, like, oil leaking out of the top end of it, which is not what you want to see at 21,000 miles. So... But you have an extended warranty. I have an extended warranty, so it'll be fine. Yeah. But uh, my car, I'm going to pick two, actually. I'm going to double dip here, right. oh. but it's kind of the same car. I'm going to bet one's a Volvo. It's not. Oh, It's oh. not a Volvo, no. Um, Kia Stinger GT yeah. Uh, yeah. and yeah. the Genesis G70. I'm going to lump those into one 
Because uh, they, 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 they share they, the same powertrain They platform. share a powertrain, they share a platform, although the G70 is shorter and lighter than the Stinger. Yep. Um, I think that car is just a, a great example of Kia trying to do something different and knocking it out of the park. Uh, it's a good amount of horsepower, mm -hmm. 365 horsepower, a pretty decent value actually when you think about it. Uh, and the cool thing is the G70 and the Stinger are basically the same price. It doesn't actually matter. They, they start around the same place they and they end around up the around place. the same place. Yeah. Um, I thought it, it's not like an M car, it's not an M3 competitor, but as a high-end 3 Series competitor or a high-end uh, C-Class competitor, I thought it was a really compelling uh, prospect, really fun to drive, even on track. Great car. I think it's and cool anybody, anybody out there that is shopping for a high-end Camry V6 or mm -hmm. an Accord 2.0T, you can get into the Stinger 2.0T and have a rear-wheel drive thing for about the same price. Or you can buy a Genesis G70 with a 2.0T. Manual, manual transmission, transmission. baby, six-speed, yeah. and it's a uh, nice one. Yeah. Slower. Oh, <laughs> Alex, you just bite me. These are dead. These are not the fastest cars. These are the best no, cars. The best cars. <laughs> <laughs> the fastest would be the McLaren, right? We got, me and you got to drive That's the McLaren. That's true. We did drive yeah. the McLaren. Yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not um, my best, and I'm, I've been racking my brain here trying to decide what's the best, and I don't know if I have one. I have a guess. What is your guess? My guess is that yours was the new M5. That's oh, that's guess. true. The M5 was lovely. I that's do love guess. the M5. You were just chopping up the all in vehicles for saying that they're too heavy and but I but that's why I like and this is a, BMW probably doesn't like me for saying this, but I like the M5 because it is not that classic M anymore. It's livable, it's practical, mm -hmm. it's insanely fast, it's okay. quiet, it's comfortable, it's, it's well fast. built has all the gadgets and goodies you want. You can stick two child seats in the back and still run 2.8 seconds, zero to 60 if you want. Um, or you can drive it to work, you know, on your daily commute, put customers in the back, it's super smooth. They finally put a regular automatic under there instead of one of those silly dual clutch things they've had in the past, since they needed the power the handling The Germans have gone back to regular automatics, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like, I mean, same, same, same automatic that's in the track car. And actually, that's yeah. a that's a good conversation. Let's do a little side conversation here, okay? Yeah. Automatic or dual clutch, right? For a long Ooh. time, Germans mm -hmm. were all about dual clutches, right? The GTI yeah. with the dual clutch, yeah. and then the Koreans followed suit, mm -hmm. right? And now the Germans have gone back to automatics, and that's because dual clutches, let's face it, suck in traffic. They're they jerky. Suck in traffic. They're, yeah. they're jerky, and I think longevity is also an issue with dual mm -hmm. clutches. So as much as they are quick and yeah. fast and sexy. I think the reasons the Germans have gone back to automatics is because torque converters work yes. in all situations. But fuel economy was the big driver there too. Yeah. And so fuel economy is why we still see dual clutches being developed here and there. But we're not seeing it in those high performance vehicles anymore. We're seeing it in things like the Audis, base Audis with their, actually theirs is really well done. It's a really smooth dual clutch, but you have to change a fluid every 40,000 miles. Oof. That's a bummer. Oof. All right. Most surprising, ready for some most, for me, I think it had to be, I just drove the new uh, A8, uh, mm. and you, you, could, you could tell that that car is pretty much autonomous, except that they've dialed it down. In some places, it will actually drive itself. In places like the UK and America, where it's not quite legal yet, it won't, but they're like they're like knocking on the door of autonomy, right? There's level one through four, and four being fully autonomous. Are they at like three? No, no, they're literally at two, mm. or b barely two. But they're so, very close. Yeah. Which isn't full autonomy. I mean, full autonomy means like in snow in every situation, right? By itself, with not that, but it's it's really about as close as you can get to a car that's about ready to drive itself. Uh, and the amount of technology that Audi threw into that car is just mind-boggling, right? There is there is so much tech. I had I did a video and I just had a day to try to digest all of it, and I couldn't do it. I had to go with the Audi specialist because there was so much. Everything from obviously you know stuff that they've had before, Google Maps on Google Earth that integrates into it uh, to a back seat that is about as close to a first class jet experience as you can get, right? Mm -hmm. uh, massaging seats. Uh, they have like these little lights on top here that are like, uh, they look like spider lights, right? And you can actually move, this is how, this is, this is how crazy they've gone. You can move the light, not by swiveling it, but the lights actually shift focus. So you have a little like iPad and you point on the iPad to where you want the beam to point. <laughs> and then the little, the little lights change Intensity, so they can this point. Is, this is too difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, you have to have your iPad. You have to go right. like, oh, I want it to point over here because it's <laughs> much easier for me to read my book here than it is here. I mean, I mean, you know, you know, stuff that has gone way beyond what you would think. So it was a really surprising car. The styling, I wasn't impressed. For me, it looked a little bit too much like a Lincoln, the back end especially. Yeah. 
Uh, Audi has been very conservative in their styling and, and all the it's, it's getting it's getting really hard to tell the Audis apart now. Seriously, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's hard to tell a six from a five from a mm -hmm. from a four <laughs> if oh, you look yeah. at them coming at you. Yeah, and the engine is still in the wrong place. And the engine is still transversely mounted, I believe. You know, it's front, longitudinally it's, it's it's front, 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 front. Yeah, it's yeah. longitudinally in the back. Uh, all wheel drive, of course. Uh, three liter back to a turbo, no longer supercharged. Uh, and uh, yeah, fast, powerful, sexy. And, you know, I'd wait for that one to depreciate a little bit because they're not cheap. <laughs> and, it, and it jumps. It, it launches yeah, it has, it has this ability, oh, yeah. actually, it's got active suspension, so if it sees a pothole coming, it can raise that wheel so it doesn't hit the pothole. So for a second, That's you can crazy. drive on three wheels. That's so crazy. But doesn't it also lift itself up if a car's coming out on the yeah, side? It like it's, it's, yeah, it, it, so it, does, it does two things, yeah, so it can lift the wheel up, or if a car is about to hit it on its side, it has sensors that completely surround it. It will lift it up so that you, the car hits in the floor pan, which is much stronger than the door, right? So yeah. it hits in the strongest part of the car, wow. protecting the totally occupant. Cool. So yeah, yeah, just uh, just like you know, the next level of technology. And if you hate autonomous cars, then I suggest you go buy you know <laughs> an old truck. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, Nathan, how about you? Most surprising. Mine's exactly like yours, except yeah. it's completely different. Okay, okay. 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 again, again, yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're really close though. Yeah. Mine's the Chevy. Bolt. The Chevy Bolt. Just like really. 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 It's it's really, really close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bolt. I um, I used to despise electric cars. Mm -hmm. uh, Roman and I years and years ago took one, a uh, Tesla Roadster up and over, um, with with street tires on it. And, yeah. Uh, up, up, up peak to peak over to Estes Park. I think we were one of the first people to put one in snow. Yeah. Anyway, um, it didn't go well. Um, <laughs> And I've driven some. I've, I've driven a few Teslas. And what a hundred fifty thousand dollar car on summer tires in the in snow. The snow? Go well. <laughs> what, what could go wrong? What could go wrong? But when I got into the Bolt, two things happened. One, I could. I actually pictured myself thinking, I could own this. It's it, it's a car, but it's really advanced. They did a lot of smart things with it. It's not perfect. Um, and then I took my family. It's a resounding endorsement. It's a car. It's it, a car. But that is, if you think about it, though, how advanced and how far they could have gone. No, they didn't do you, that. You know, it's a good point, right? The litmus test for when electric cars become mainstream is when they're just cars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's not electric that, cars. Well, we said that, yeah. yeah. Yep. That's very funny. And I took my family in one in San Francisco, and ironically, the Bay Area didn't have a lot of chargers. I was kind of pissed off about that. But the point is, is that 230 miles, yeah, I actually drove it a couple times, up to 200 miles, still at range left, took my kids, took my spouse, we went everywhere. It did everything I asked it to do. It was quick. It was easy. Uh, the entertainment it's system just, was good. It's just tall, you know. Yeah. It's like the i3. I, my yeah. problem is the the driver's seat. I found it really uncomfortable. It, it didn't really bother me, and we were in the car for a long period of time. We went back and forth to Petaluma, San Francisco, a few times. The point is, is that that car really surprised me because it was a car, and I had driven the Nissan Leaf several times prior to that. It's so much better. Now I don't know about the new one. We haven't driven. I haven't driven it yet. But at least the Leaf's range is still a little low. Yeah, it is a little low. Because remember, this is Leaf like 1.5. It's not yeah, really Leaf yeah, it doesn't 2.0. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming. It's it really, coming by yeah. the end of this year. The, How can you not pull the trigger when you know that yeah. you need to be competitive with the Bolt? That's uh, Well, anyway, the point it has is... to be something. The, yeah. yeah, the Chevy Bolt really, truly did surprise me. All right, Michael, how about you? Uh, I've got two again. Okay. Oh, I'm going to put a Volvo? Yes! Oh, what is a Volvo? Because, uh, what was their name? Uh... Cutelia? Okay. Cutelia. Hey, Cutelia. Asked uh, Volvo S60 Polestar, question mark, question mark, question mark. Yeah. Brakes, one more question mark. Yeah. Uh, and that brings up a good point that I kind of wanted to bring up about the S60 Polestar that we drove together, yeah. actually. We did. Uh, so it's a hybrid system, right? It has a twin-charged four-cylinder, so supercharged, turbocharged four-cylinder with a hybrid. Uh, but the Polestar edition, or Polestar engineered is what they call it, has these crazy big Brembo brakes up in the front. But the braking, the way they do braking is like this weird mix between you, you feel the regen system braking you first, and then there's this yeah. kind of awkward transition into the physical brakes, the mechanical brakes. Uh, and that was surprising to me yeah. because as a result of that kind of weird brake feel, I actually found the non Polestar, I thought the R Design S60 was more fun to drive for me than the Polestar version. 
That was the they surprise. Did say, they did say that they were not done do, tuning the brake yeah, software. Yeah, so... Because it was peculiar, really it was weird. really strange. But what's weird is none of the other plug-in hybrids that Volvo has were that weird. Yeah. So I'm thinking it must be the programming around those new mechanical brakes. Yeah, Probably the Brembos they, are... They have not giant out six piston yet. Brembos. All right, so that that's, was surprising. That's number one. What's number two? Number two was the Kia Forte. The 2019 Forte. Kia Forte. Wow. Really? I'm I'm another Kia. You are um, a Kia man. I'm, I'm on the Kia hype train. Yeah. Because uh, I thought it was a, just a really incredible value. The thing starts at like $17,000. Uh, it's stylish. It comes with a lot of tech. It gets great gas mileage. You'd buy it over a Civic? <clears throat> uh, yeah, I think I would buy it over a Civic because yeah. of that 10 year, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty. That's pretty insane. It's a great I, idea. I have, I, have a, I have two cars on my list, too, but one of them is a Kia. Maybe I should re, uh, rethink my... No, uh, no, 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 my first one, though, is, is more of a technology thing than the car itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We drove the Super Cruise CT6, and we drove the CT6 plug-in hybrid, and I was really impressed with both of them. The, mm -hmm. the Super Cruise system worked really, really well. It's the first eyes off, uh, her hands off system. So, in, you know, autopilot, you have to have your hands on the wheel still. Super Cruise, you just have to be looking yeah, forward. But there's a problem. Oh. You know what the problem is? What is the problem? How much does it cost? It is pricey, but... How much? You know, $8,000, uh, 80, dude. 80000 80000 80000 Well, for the car, it's yeah, eight, that the, car the, the, the steering component, I think, is $8,000. It's an $8,000 option. For sure. Yes, at the yeah. moment. Yeah. But they're promising that it will be available on all Cadillac 8, models 000. and other models less expensive in the 2020 calendar year. I could buy a whole, like, YJ for $8,000. Yes. <laughs> it really drives it still works. still worked well. I was I was really impressed because we went on a road trip. It did 120 miles, and we only had to touch the steering wheel about twice. Okay. So that was pretty cool. The plug-in hybrid system was actually really interestingly done as well. It was much smoother than anybody else's plug-in hybrid in that segment. So I was really impressed with those. The bad part about the plug-in hybrid is that it is only jammed into a really cheap trim level of CT6, so you don't get the nice seats or any of the other nice stuff. It's a bummer there. But let's, anyway, let's do another sidebar. Mm -hmm. Cadillac. Cadillac. Huh? <laughs> where is where has it been and where is the brand going? So this, this ties question. in. This ties in with my number two option, so which I is was, actually the K900, which we all we all throw that together. Hey, we're doing a lot of together. Yeah. I was just uh, driving the XT4, the new baby Cadillac, mm -hmm. and uh, I was sitting there. You know, they usually do like a product presentation, right? So we went to dinner, and before they did their product presentation, they had this massive wall, and they had all this like video going, and there were two distinct videos, right, in the same video. Uh -huh. One was like this girl sitting in a very urban building, kind of on the win window shade, kind of looking very forlorn, you know, and then like the, the Cadillac drives underneath in the city. So it's obviously New York, very urban, right, very hipster, right? That, uh -huh. was, that was the image. And the other one was like this beautiful young man who had just gotten out of his XT4 running along the beach, like somewhere in California, <laughs> right up to the top and doing sure. like, kind of like a rocking wheel. Uh -huh. And I'm thinking to myself, Cadillac, what are you trying to be? Are you urban and hip or are you active lifestyle? And I'm like, pick one, right? Pick one. You, you can't be both. You can't be urban and hip and active lifestyle. So I think Cadillac right now has an image problem, mm -hmm. but that's not the image problem. The real image problem is I think you can't out-German the Germans, right? So Cadillac right. has yeah. tried to right. put their cars up on the Nürburgring and try to put them up against BMW and Cadillac, well, I personally think never out German the Germans. So I be an American could. car brand. I think they could if they were willing to spend the money, but they're Maybe. not willing to spend the money. And, they're the and, that was, and that was what I thought was impressive about the K900 was somehow Kia, of all companies, yeah. was willing to spend enormous quantities of cash on a car that will never sell. On a car that sold I mean, 263 you, yeah. units. You go, in a year, like, you, you sit in the back seat and just the, the attention to detail, yeah. the fit and finish, the parts quality, everything is above the Cadillac CT6, which I think is a shame. And that's that's what struck me, I think, about about that car. You look in the backseat of the Canon Hundred versus a Continental or a CT6, the two American large luxury cars that are ostensibly for people in the back, and a Korean for sixty thousand dollars does it better. So full disclosure, Kia does not flew Alex <laughs> to Seoul. Oh yeah, they did. They fed, did. fed him great food. Drove him around all over the place to all kinds of amusement parks, right? Yes, yes. But hey, but Audi flew you to somewhere to yeah, drive. Hold on, I'm not done. And did not take him to a gentleman's club. And I'm, leaving it, I'm, leaving, I'm leaving it at that. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> but they flew me to the same program, and I feel the same way about that car. Yeah, so obviously I'm having a little bit of fun, but you know these programs that we go on, we are taken there by the manufacturer. We are put up in Schnazzy hotels, yeah. fed great food, and we're always transparent about that, so yeah. I thought it was important to know. How one, come? One, dis one disclaimer there is the K900 for me is about the car, not the brand, because it's a 
totally the wrong logo on the oh, hood. Yeah. If you stuck a Lexus logo on that, or a, I think a Lincoln logo would be the best fit for the Canon 100. If that was a Lincoln, that would Man. be the best Lincoln Man, ever. Man, that would be a great Lincoln. So how come you didn't talk about the Jaguar I-Pace? I thought that would be one oh, of your yeah. most, you just, yeah. you just got out of that I just car. got out of that and yeah. I'm really torn because the electric before, Jaguar, before driving the I-Pace, I was thinking to myself, this is it, this is the one, you know, I have a EV that we're leasing, that's lease is coming due. The I-Pace is the one, it's the most logical one, I should get that, it's great. And I, I felt about it the same way that I felt about the other Jags that I've owned. I'm a multiple Jag, uh, you know, survivor. And, um, <laughs> and it's like it's like an abusive relationship. Every time I drove my XJ, I loved it, and I'm like, I'm in love with this thing. It's fabulous. And then every time you get out of it, you start thinking about those little things that were just not quite right. And then they start registering in your mind, and then you get like back in and you love it again. Work, you know, yeah, stuff. those little right. things. Those little things. things. <laughs> little things. Little yes. things. Or how you have to carry on a trailer half the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, those small things. But the, I mean, it's like the i. It's gorgeous. I like the exterior, the interior. It's it, it drives well. It has eleven inches of ground clearance, which is insane. But it's a lot. It charges slowly. It you know, runs the, on twenty twos, which is also insane. Yeah, you can, can get it with twenty twos. Yeah. yeah. The but think about the roller the resistance. Yeah. But I mean, it's like the charger slows seven kilowatts, so 13 hours to go from zero to 100% if you're charging it at home. The DC fast chargers will go faster, but if you're charging at home like most people do, that's kind of slow, slower than any of the competitive Teslas. Did you do zero to 60 on it? We did, oh, and fast. it was fast. It was a 4243, uh, uh, which is a little bit faster than they said. I mean, they, they're quoting four or five, so that's believable. Everybody in, in the luxury segment lies a little bit there, and it's really fast. You know, you know what's crazy? Jaguar is the first company mainstream company to compete with Tesla mm -hmm. really they are uh, you know obviously bolt came first like yeah. you said but you know in the luxury but, space yeah it's not a true Tesla company right yeah so you would have think you know it would yeah. be somebody like I don't know Audi, uh, Audi. and Audi yeah. is coming out with their e-tron in probably nine months from now They're and still... the I-Pace ended up a little pricey I mean you can get it up to a hundred thousand dollars if you try yeah I mean same with Tesla you can, you can make an S model class, 3 model S. 3 won't go that high and remember the I-Pace is a GLC XC60 sized vehicle mm. it's not a big thing all right so before we get to the cars that we're most looking forward to in the near future because we are going to the LA Auto show and you oh, may yeah. or may not be going but we'll talk about that uh, any comments or shout outs that, that, that people have questions there are actually a lot of questions there. um as as always yeah uh, let me find a good one. Give me one second. So we are going to the LA Auto Show while he looks for good questions or comments. Uh, and we've got obviously a lot of new vehicles coming out. Probably the most important one is a new Jeep truck. So be sure to stay tuned for that. We're going to be super excited. Uh, there's also the Shelby GT500 coming. Mm. Uh, the new Supra is coming. Uh, That's coming Mazda is doing the three. That's true. Yes. Yeah. Three. Mazda yeah. three is it? Is it? So what's going to be Detroit? Is that going to run? Uh, yeah, the the Supra, I believe, will will. Be the Supra is Detroit. Detroit. But the Mazda three is coming. The Mazda three is coming. And you'll be there. Yep, I'll be there. That's that's a um, an event outside of the LA Auto Show. They do it every year. They have a special event, and it's usually really well attended. So we're going to be in a crowd of Mazda freaks. All right, what what you got there for us, Mike? I really like this question because I think it's a funny question. Yep. Cisse Asan asks, should the Ford EcoSport have a more powerful engine? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Out of all the questions. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's an easy one. Give us the hard one. Uh, Although everybody in that segment is slow, so. Yeah, but. Oh, oh Asasha Spiruk asks, where is our Russian? He's a cool guy. He's right over there. Oh, yeah, he's he's right over there. He's right over there. Over there. But he's mainly been driving trucks, so we're going to leave uh, that for the truck Ooh, yeah, portion of the show. This we'll, is we'll, a truck. We'll, we'll, we'll do it next time. This is something we don't know the answer to, but we can ponder for a little bit. Uh, Taylor Alba asks, when is the next Tundra redesign? It's a good question. The 12th of never. Oh, <laughs> Tundra and Toyota are really um, slow and methodical in development cycles because they want to keep that reliability. So they have a lot of, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of very, yeah, and tests that they have to do before they read it. So they're very slow. They get there, but it's yeah. slow. Yeah. Here's but, my theory. They're, uh, Toyota's dedication to reliability and Lexus's as well is ending up making them uh, disadvantaged competitively now. It's possible, especially in the yeah. truck segment, because in any other segment, Toyota's reputation for reliability, I think, ser serves them well. But in yeah. trucks, you know, it's so competitive that the mm -hmm. domestics are just as reliable. So I'm not sure they're getting anything. The trouble is, innovation breeds unreliability. At some point. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, 
There was one more question that I thought was interesting, asking about the eCopo Camaro. Oh yeah, the electric. Uh, the they just electric unveiled that. Uh, yeah, they so unveiled the electric. Like a thousand horsepower. Right? So it's seven hundred horsepower, six hundred pound feet of torque, out of an electric. It's a two motor electric engine yep. that powers a four speed automatic transmission to a solid mm -hmm. rear axle. Oh. Which is kind of a goofy. I don't, I'm not. I don't know why it is that you'd. Ra I mean, I guess for a drag car, having a solid rear axle is good because you want those wheels to be spinning at the same speed. But I guess they took a hit on powertrain loss, right? Because you're sending power now through a transmission and a, and a differential. Or no, it's got a transmission. It's got a, a four-speed automatic really? transmission wow. on an electric huh. motor. Usually they don't have transmission. Which is yeah. really bizarre. Yeah. Yeah, it is bizarre. Yeah. Um, so wow. interesting. That's an interesting question. All right. So let's get to uh, the cars that we're looking forward to now. Of course, we can't talk about how to drive because we haven't driven them, but the one that I'm looking forward to is the G-Wagon. Uh, I'm, you know, I love off-roading. Mm -hmm. I love uh, the G-Wagon. It's one of my favorite cars. It's my kind of dream car, especially the one that is squared, which is the most expensive one out there. <laughs> hey, I think we have another guest coming. Is, is he coming? Tommy? Is Tommy? Tommy! Come and join us, Tommy. We got one more. Is he here? Come uh, on, Tommy. Oh, he left. Uh, Oh, you heard his name. Well, yeah. He ran away. He, he ran, ran out. But I'm looking forward to the G-Wagon. And um, we have a surprise video coming this weekend. There he is. Come on, Tommy. There You've just is. been working on this vehicle. Let him know what it is. Come on. We have a surprise video coming. We're live, Tommy. We're, We're live. live. Come us. sit down. You've just been outside working on our newest acquisition. <clears throat> You're going to be the first one to know what we just purchased. And it's a oh, baby G-Wagon. Can you guys... Baby G-Wagon? Can you guys guess what we just purchased? A baby G-Wagon. Yeah, let us know in the comments what you think the baby G-Wagon in question is. Yeah, and Tommy, now that you're here, I'm going to put you on the spot. What's the best car you've driven this year? The one that you're like the oh. most. I know. You want to think yeah. about it a little bit? And we'll let Nathan go about yeah, what we'll, it. Yeah, I'll, I'll let me think about it. About it. Right. And, okay. and let us know what you think the baby G-Wagon that we just bought is. Um, I, I know it's not a car, but I can't help it. Because, you know, I'm a Jeep guy, right? Yeah. So the Jeep truck, the JT. Yeah. I'm absolutely mm -hmm. chomping at the bit for it. And why? Mm -hmm. It's your fault. You guys have been on me about it for years, and they're finally doing it. And we're finally going to drive it eventually. But we're going to see it really <laughs> soon. <laughs> so that's, that's the one I really am looking forward to getting my hands on that one. And you, Michael? Mine is not a car. It's an engine. Because a Mopar at SEMA just unveiled something called the Helephant. Yeah. Which is a 7 liter, 426 cubic inch supercharged V8 that makes a thousand horsepower. It's a crate engine kit, and we don't know the pricing yet, but I think it's going to cost more than 20 grand. You, you well, know, over 20 grand. You know, Land Rover engine's a little bit. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, I think it would be so bad. FCA, if you feel like, or Mopar, if you feel like sending us a elephant, please do, because that I, I need to experience a 1,000 horsepower motor at some point in my life. There's a van again in your front parking lot that looks like it might need a new engine, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think the hell of it, yeah. I, I think we exceed its payload. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Uh, you can fix that. All right, how about you, Alex? Uh, I'm actually kind of looking forward to driving the new Nexo, the Hyundai fuel cell mm -hmm. car. We should have that, we are told, next month. Did you get to drive it, Zach? Yeah. <coughs> Zach, drive it. Sit over here. Oh, there we go. Uh, we have somebody who's going to let you do it. Able to come, come join us. Yeah, on come join stars. us. All right. All right. So you have to drive to drive that. I did. I did get to drive the Nexo out in California. Um, I wrote up a piece for it on TFLcar.com. It was a remarkable car. It really was. That's it was my cool. first hydrogen car. Oh, your first? Okay. We've yeah. driven all the others. Um, so it's it like, has, I believe, 161 horsepower. It's three, 360-ish mm -hmm. miles of range. Mm -hmm. That's great. The wow. big, big thing with hydrogen cars is when you look at like the Clarity series, the, the battery pack to make the Clarity go 90 miles, the electric one has a pretty pitiful range, versus the Clarity Hydrogen, the Clarity Hydrogen system is about that same weight. Um, so, and it goes 300 and something miles. So when you scale this up to Tesla sized battery packs, so they're weighing 1,300, 1,400 pounds to go 250, 300 miles, hmm. a hydrogen fuel cell stack and the tanks can be up to 50% lighter. So there's a small problem. There's a problem as always, and that is in Colorado, there's exactly one hydrogen station. Yes. Where is it? It's at the, uh, it's actually not far from here. It's oh. at, the, at the National uh, Renewable Energy yes. Lab. <laughs> and I actually tried to get a Clarity hydrogen car because I'm really curious. I really want yeah. to get a long-term one. You just have to come yeah. out and visit me. Visit yeah. me to the auto's <laughs> office. And, 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 and I wasn't like, opposed to it, but they weren't keen on it, but they said, you have to be able to refuel it. So I called these guys, 
And I said, can I use your accusation? They said, no. What? It's only, they would, it's only for government. Oh. It's a national oh. renewable energy oh. land, not for us. I live in the land of hydrogen stations, so you'll just have to come out and but try even one. Then, but even then, there's not there really aren't very many, many stations, no. and that's the problem. Last time I Nexo. checked, there were 19 in California. 19? 19. There's there a lot more that, like, there's there's like a year year there will be something like 60 by the end of this year. Oh, wow. Oh. Have you used one? Yeah, I've used we've, like, so we've, we've, we've driven all the available hydrogen cars except the Nexo. Oh, there's only two. Uh, well, the previous generation Hyundai one as well. Okay, all right. Um, and Mercedes had one. Yeah, you were telling um, me that the fueling the process is kind the of the fueling process is a little bit funky, but it's but speed wise, it's very gasoline like. I mean, mm -hmm. it fills up in five minutes. Uh, you connect the hose, the, the machine pumps a while, so it checks the pressure, so, it pumps again. So if I were in California, I'd have a Honda Clarity hydrogen because Honda gives you a credit yes. card with, I believe it's eighteen thousand dollars worth of. Whoa. of and, and credit they're, for fuel. And Basically, they're, they're paying yes. you to drive the car. And their, their lease grand. is essentially all inclusive. So you lease your Clarity yeah. Hydrogen. It's three ninety nine. It's fuel and twenty thousand miles a year on the lease. It's a very high mileage lease. Wow. I think yeah. it's three ninety nine. I think it's three ninety nine a year. Yeah. yeah. And the Mirai is is similarly uh, expensive, similar price, but the Mirai is unfortunately looking. You know, yes, it's, 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 it was hit by the interesting yes. stick. Yes. I have, a, I have a question for you. So uh, yesterday, GM Defense. The military wing of General Motors announced this really interesting uh, thing called the ZH2 Silverado. I think you're talking about the truck show, which we're not yeah, on. Yeah, Michael. Yeah, we're not on. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, I'm, I'm not getting the truck it's show. It's about hydrogen. Hold on. Here. <laughs> the tanks are not uh, volume, but they're a pressure rating. So it has three mm -hmm. 700 bar tanks. Is that how every hydrogen car yes. works? Yes, that is how they They keep increasing the yes. pressure so they can get more hydrogen right. into Because there are yeah. two different pressures. You can fill two different pressure levels. So okay. Oh, interesting. You, if you, I guess if you hunted, you could find an old hydrogen station, but I don't know where they are. I've never seen one, uh -huh. really. It's like the old natural gas ones. Natural gas have two different pressure levels. Gotcha. Too. Okay. Yeah, All right, Tom. I was curious about how that yeah, works. Well, fortunately, my office is right next to a hydrogen station, so you know you can come out and test one. I will. I'd love that, Michael. Any uh, uh, any guesses on the baby G wagon? Nobody G has guessed well, what the oh, baby uh, G, G wagon. Is. Well, then you're gonna have to watch tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow. On, T on TFL car. You're gonna no see. No one got it. No one people got are it. thinking drop, drop, drop hints. People are also <laughs> guessing four door uh, Wrangler on the mid. We already no, have a Wrangler. No, no baby G wagon. No. It's very rusty. Would you call it a baby G? Really? From baby the front, it kind of looks like a baby G wagon. The it's lights the look shape. delicious. Yeah. <laughs> okay, if you say By so. Shape. Yeah, yeah. It looks, it looks like a baby G wagon. If you like, you know, close one eye. It's <laughs> so hard. And, and you have to back the about fifty is, feet away from it. Yeah. The problem is that it's not black. It doesn't have twenty-five inch rims, and it doesn't have a big star in the middle. You should be dazzled. Hey, question. we should put a big star in the middle. <laughs> 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 All right, Tommy, what's the best car you drove this year? Um, it was the new Mazda 6 with Ooh, the, with the, really? with the turbocharged turbo? engine. Yeah. Really? Uh, I really choice. liked the, the Mazda 6 to begin with. I think it was a, um, a really smooth platform. I like the interior. Um, I, I just love the new design language. But the one part of the vehicle that, that's kind of been lacking, in, 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 in my opinion, was the engine. Mm -hmm. And that new, was it, two and a half liter turbo? is 2.5 liter turbocharged yeah. sky active engine, 250 horsepower, 310 pound feet of torque. Yeah, you're, gonna get, yeah. you're not going to get me on Mazda things. I am our resident <laughs> Mazda, 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 Mazda guy. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm thinking kind of about the brands that we haven't talked about. I think there's one that's still missing, and the, they have had two really interesting cars. And I'm talking about Ford. I think the Navigator and the Expedition. Yeah, well, are, actually, are there are have been a lot of questions about the Expedition. Are really good cars. Those Nathan, you want to take that one? Yeah, the Expedition. They basically have a new vehicle. It, it, it's from the ground up. You're talking about. Four-wheel independent suspension. You're talking about a really powerful EcoBoost engine, and if you get is it the Platinum, you get the top of the line model. You get the really powerful EcoBoost right out of the Raptor. You've got um, a very comfortable interior. You have a very quiet interior. Its driving dynamics are really good. I think that Ford has finally beat Chevrolet and GMC. And that Lincoln is so much better than the Cadillac. Mm -hmm. it, uh, we were a little frustrated with the one we had because some of the build quality was a little eh, on oh. the inside. Yeah, it was unfortunate. It's a bit of a, oh. Yeah. This car was pretty good. Another vehicle that we're, I think, looking forward to driving, and you both will be driving. I have to be driven it. I can't talk about how it drives because I drove the embargoed version of the new RAV4. Well, uh, the RAV4, uh, I mean, considering but, how popular but, but you guys are going actually on the program, so you yeah. have to drive and you have to tell people how it drives. So that's another one that we're pretty excited about, yeah. I think. Yeah, that's coming up on November 14th. I am actually excited about that because it's the first RAV4 that is actually exciting. 
Once again, you are wrong, sir, because there's a, a there's a RAV4 that was very exciting, and that was the first generation V6. V6 RAV4 was a monster. Okay. It was really fast. It was really fast. It was really fast. We used to go to the uh, local racetrack here. and But it was a one-trick pony. It's still a RAV4. Yeah, it's still a yeah. fucking fast RAV4. The new, the new RAV looks good. It has a torque. The only torque vectoring rear axle in that segment. Wow. And it'll be the, the probably the most efficient in that segment if you want to go that direction. So unlike the old V6 Rav4, this is looks like it's not going to be one trick pony. Yeah, and uh, the hybrid is actually faster than the regular one. If you want the performance one, you got to go with the hybrid. Yeah, there's one more Ford vehicle we didn't talk about. What's that? The new Bronco coming up. Ooh, That's everybody's yeah. yeah. It's not coming out this year. They're very tight-lipped about the Bronco. So it's going to it's gonna be a couple of years change. before we get to touch it. I guarantee it. I think we're closer than we think. Mike, nobody likes it when there's a smart aleck in the room. <laughs> I'm going to have to tell mom. <laughs> All right, this is, this is not so this is okay, Dad. We also have talked about Nissan. I drove the new Ultima. Oh, yeah. Check out that video. And there's a new Maxima and uh, Murano that, that are slight mm -hmm. refreshes that we're going to be driving as well. Those are coming. Yeah. Uh, and Mercedes-Benz has uh, some new vehicles that are Yeah, the A-Class. Ooh, the A-Class was actually really good. Yeah. I really liked the A-Class. Go check out my review of the 2019 Mercedes-Benz A-Class sedan on TFL Now, and if you haven't already. And their Mercedes' great new inline six engine is turtling its way into everything now. So yeah. finally, the E finally as well. All right, you're a car and truck guy, so name the other two, soon to be three straight sixes you can buy in America. Including the upcoming ones? Because there's so why there's two that you can buy right now? The BMW and the Mercedes, then we'll get the inline six diesel from GM. And there's one more. That's good. You're missing oh, one more. What am I missing? Everybody misses this one. Mm. Nathan, you know what it is. Starts with a C, ends with an Ummins. Oh, the, oh, the Cummins, yeah. That's, that's true, the Ram Cummins, yeah. Subtle. <laughs> this is a subtle in from it. I didn't know how far truck we were going. Yeah, yeah. I thought we were, we were trying to stay away from truck trucks yeah, too much. But yeah, good. Oh, good. Wait, I did throw the GM diesel in there. So and and speaking of trucks, it's a good transition moment. Today we did something that was really fun, as you guys oh, might yeah. know. We've got the Gold Hitch and Gold Winch uh, testing that's happening right now. We're actually filming all that. We're not putting up those videos quite yet. We did the first one which was just a little mini drag race, but today we did a monster drag race. Oh, man. We drag raced uh, six trucks well, for what we're calling uh, the world's toughest truck drag race, uh, and that'll be up on TFL Truck this weekend, so you'll be sure to want to see that, because that was a really interesting uh, race. $335,000 worth of new pickup trucks. Oof. Yeah. And how much, horse, how much horsepower do you work on? Like it's 2,280 2, horsepower. Yeah. So yeah. three hundred thousand dollars worth of pickup trucks. So today's pickup truck prices. That was what three? Yeah, <laughs> yeah seriously. And, and for all, oh, oh, someone got it. People got it. People got it. People got it. Yeah. Oh. 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 All right. So tell them what it is. Uh, Logan Hart and Harry Witt, you are correct. The Suzuki Samurai is our new, <laughs> our new baby G wagon. That's right, baby. It's a sweet piece of 1980s goodness. It's a fell somersault. It's slightly rusted out in the bottom. Oh, it's, 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 it's okay. a little tiny bit of rust. This is something that is a pure analog vehicle. It's got. It's so, got viewers, one. if you're ready, let's start taking polls on how soon it's going to be till they roll it. No, 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 no. It's completely no, no, no. stock, which is really and hard original. to find. Yeah, it's really cool. It's actually. completely original. So we'll have that video up on uh, TFL Car tomorrow. You guys are yeah. here first. It's beige. Yeah, we're editing. It's beige. We're it's editing beige. it. We're it's editing. desert sand. <laughs> well, guys, <laughs> excuse me. Sorry. I think Nathan has actually finally liked one of our projects. This is the finally. first one of the first vehicles finally. that Roman has purchased without telling me, by the way. And, uh, <laughs> I always have to surprise him. Yeah, and uh, a lot of the surprises have been not so great. This is awesome. Trust me, off roading. It's going to be fun. All right. Cool. So I want to thank Nathan, our producer, Zach, uh, Michael, uh, Tommy, and Alex. You just put out a review today. What do you, what's new on your channel today? We have the iPace today. The iPace. So if you want to get see the Alex's complete buy review, and this is about as comprehensive. I think you do the most comprehensive buy reviews out there. I don't think oh, anybody, so you, uh, anybody even comes close. If you have insomnia, we are your channel. <laughs> this is a this is a, a good metaphor for what we do here. We've got a rusty samurai coming tomorrow. Yeah. Now we've got the future of the yeah. Jaguar brand. <laughs> I face pick your poison here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we are very garage band over here. <laughs> you might have to go show up. Yeah, you might have to go turn the turn the camera off. No. Right? <laughs> no, you just have to keep front of the live show. Uh, okay. Thanks for watching, guys. So, uh, it was really fun to have you on the show today. Yeah, yeah, thank, you guys. Guys. Thank, you yeah. thank you guys. Thank you guys for joining us, uh, and we'll. 
return to regular scheduled programming next week. We want to take advantage of Alex, so that's why we went a little bit early today. Yep, we guarantee um, no no jokes, no smiles, <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> no nonsense. Just no monotone. Nonsense. So mo 30 minutes of monotone. <laughs> wow. But in 4K. I was born without a personality. Is it's, like it's 4K monotone. It is 4K monotone. It's 4K monotone. But you know what? If I were buying a car, your review would be the one I'd want to watch. Oh, for sure. For sure. Uh, yeah, I would watch it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I watch them all, actually. See you guys.